Ran recruited. Ah, uh, recruit. Okay, recruiter. Okay. Uh, that one kita include in our in the executor dengan this is in this is oh, in some way. Recruiter ke bequeath? Bequeath, bequeath. Hmm. Dia uh. dah bagi pada anak dia kan? Ah, uh -uh, but when I look hmm? into textbook, they okay. say that it is excluded. It is supposed to be under the person who is responsible for that rental bequeath. Okay, so uh, the treatment should be that, that that income because that one has been bequeathed to the child. Okay, katalah like that's a property or land, isn't it? Yes. That sir. one bequeathed to the child. Mm -hmm. So it's so no longer so part of the, uh, kita panggil apa eh? Estate. Estate. It's no longer under estate. So it should not be part of the estate lah. So it will not be under the dissolved person. It should not be under the executor. Bukan kita discount macam tu kan? Sebab kalau saya tengok tutorial yang saya dah bincang macam doktor include kan? I rasa macam tak include. Oh yeah. Hmm. Sorry doktor. <laughs> Sebab because, dia macam-macam okay in Malay kita panggil dah hibah lah. Have you heard of hibah? So maknanya before before the uh, before death you already have given that property to your child. Right? Bequeath is it bequeath after or before? Before I think. Nah, kalau before maknanya memang that portion of wealth is no longer an estate lah because estate ni what belongs to the to the deceased person at the time of death. So if you have given out that as that wealth to a person Alright, then it's no longer part of the estate. So it should not be taken into the computation. I, uh, it should be like that unless our discussion was otherwise. It should be, it should not be included. Okay, doctor. Thank you. Kalau you, kalau, if the tutorial we did wrongly, so maybe you have to uh, correct it lah. Yeah, because it should not be part, because it already have bequeathed to the child. Okay. All right. Next question. Okay. Ada tak? Okay. Bila estate, remember ya, yeah, you have to do two columns. Remember that, okay, for this estate is actually the wealth of the deceased person. So normally the question is in the year, uh, okay, I start share screen. Hold on ya. Yeah. So when talk about the uh, topic on estate is normally uh, in the year of death, right? So in the year of death means that you have to do two computation. One is the tax com for the for the deceased, and the other side is on the executor, all right? So the deceased period will be from the from first January. Hmm, the tak kawan I ke, the kawan I hari ni. Okay. From 1st January, kita tak kawan I hari ni, okay. 1st January, uh, whatever year it is, alright, in the year of death, until date of death. So, that will be the deceased person period. For the executor, is the day after the death until 31st of December of the year of deceased. So, what happened is that uh, whenever you have two columns, then you, whatever income that you receive, alright, in this case, receive, eh, Kenapa dia jadi macam tu pula? I pegang pen kat sini, dia tulis kat sini pula eh. Ni nak buat macam mana ni? Dia pakai I punya pula. Oh, I tulis je macam ni. Eh, tak betul lah benda ni. Hmm. Ni tak tahu nak buat macam mana. Okay. Um, what, where were we? Okay, so you, whenever you have an income, then you have to divide the income between the two columns lah. The disease and the estate, right? And the computation of your tax com must be always according to the income tax act lah. So for example, you start with your section 4A. Please, please do well. I hmm. said buat dekat Excel lagi cepat aku. Okay, right? So, uh, remember that the format of the computation will always be the same. 
Dia tak nak. Hari ni dia tak kawan I. Hmm. So that's why from the beginning of the semester, I told you that um, you should always remember the format of your tax computation because wherever, whether you do trust, whether you do asset, as, uh, estate or even you do any other tax comp, it will always based on your income tax act, the format of your chargeable income, right? So for here, for example, you always have, uh, you start with your business income, okay, section 4, 4A, okay? Then, of course, uh, you're talking about estate and trust. So, you have one here is the deceased period. And the other one is the executed period. Yeah. Can you see that clearly? Stupid. Okay. So, when you have your business income, uh, sometimes the question gives you a very direct information. You give you gross income from the business and then give you uh, revenue expenditure and then capital expenditure. So you must always come to your adjusted income, right? In arriving to adjusted income, your gross income minus allowable expense. Gross income minus allowable expense. Okay? So if you have many sources, for example, you have income from Malaysia, in, uh, income from business one, income from business two, then you have to uh, put uh, identify each as the income from each source. Yeah, but if the income is from foreign, all right, remember this one is the normal business, so income, income from foreign country is exempted. Yeah, okay, then you have your section 4C. Right, 4C is what? Okay, don't forget that uh, if you have many, remember that you also have allowable losses, yeah? Allowable losses brought forward against your statutory income. Of course, you may have to come to your statutory income first. All right, but normally the, the question on uh, estate is not so much on the, the format, yeah? But it's more on the application of the knowledge, how you dis divide income of the deceased person and the executor. So, of course, they see that this one we divide by time. Yeah. Time means that uh, you apportion accordingly lah, based on the number of months. Kenapa dia tak nak pergi? Okay. Alright. But talking about set, uh, other than that, for example, your of section 4C. 4C. Why is income under section 4C? Dividend. Interest. Yeah, so normally discount tak adalah. So dividend, again, you have to see whether is it from Malaysia or is it from overseas. And again, how you're going to divide between your deceased person here is based on the... Hold on, yeah. Tak jadi. Okay, so the dividend here, it has to be based on received, right? When you actually receive the dividend, whether is it during the deceased person period or during the executor's period, then you have to put the a whole amount, right? You don't have to apportion in this case, yeah, because you have to look at the date of receive. So if the dividend is received during the deceased person period, then you, you put where the final or exam here, yeah? So final means that income from Malaysia, exam means that income from overseas or income dividend from um, exam dividend, yeah. But the executor period similarly, the difference is that where are you going to put that, whether is it under the deceased person period or during the executor period, right. So that is your, uh, your, your concern. Okay, the same, all right, remember that this same, all right, the format here will be the same for your, um, the same for, for your trust later, yeah? So, it's always like that. Masinilah, dia tak nak ada battery. Yeah. Okay. 
Interest, again, based on time. So, look at the date of received. So, whether is it under a disease period or executed period. Okay. For dividend, remember that in disease person here is an individual, right? So, so, most likely dividend of an individual income, interest income is from Malaysian institution, financial institution, most likely will be exempted, right? But it's not the same for... Um, for what? Uh, company, right? For company, it's not exempted unless it's very specialized, right? Uh, most likely, whenever you have interest income under this topic, it will be exempted. Then you have your rental income, section 4, 4D is your rental income. Uh, rental income, again, based on time, yeah? So you have to apportion the rental income uh, based on the time, on the deceased person, as well as the executed. So, far, so what? Yes. Bukan kalau interest receive on executor, kita kena charge ke? Okay. Okay. Where can we get that information from? I forgot. Ah. <laughs> okay. Tak apa. It's okay. Alright. It's a homework for you. You go back you punya buku Malaysian tax. Dia ada buku Malaysian tax tak? Ada doktor. Haa. Ah. Tengok balik buku Malaysian Tax on topic interest then you see interest exemption tu on person ke on individual? Executor, how do you decide executor? Kalau cakap executor, yang macam mana? Executor boleh, but executor is a, is a, is a charge per person juga. Siapa cakap tadi? Damia? Haa, uh -uh, doktor. So, then you have to check ni. Sebab you dah tanya kan? <laughs> I rasa it should be exempted. Why? On the basis that uh, income tu actually income of the individual, of the deceased person. It's just that tax on you because you are the executor. Right? By right, it's still income of the individual. It's just that because you are the administrator, so that's why you take care of the of the estate. Doctor, so, uh, uh, dia tulis, it was help that executor does not fall into the ambit of individual and thus will not be eligible for interest income exemption under the income tax. And wow. Sem hmm, menariknya. Oh, I rasa kita macam pernah-pernah pergi benda ni eh? Ah, uh -uh, sebelum ni doktor kata tak tak boleh, uh, dia tak exempted. Uh, that's, why, that's why bila you nak decide, tak sebab ke tak benda tu kena dekat depan mata, you are kena ada facts dia, alright? So kalau macam ni, I percaya dekat you lah sebab I pun tak ingat pun. Okay, so sekarang ni it's not exempted eh. Uh, so nak letak figure apa ni? Hmm, taxable. Boleh? Ada kaya perkataan ni taxable tu. So kat sini nak letak apa? Uh, whatever amount here lah. Boleh? Hmm. So interest on the disease if received during the deceased person period is exempted provided that is interest which is exempted lah under the law. If it's not exempt then you still have to put the amount lah. But under the executor it's not exempted even though the interest is received from a Malaysian financial institution. Right? So the amount is taxable. But the rental is based on time, right? Okay, and then uh, 4E normally tak ada, 4F pun tak ada. So, you get your aggregate income. Alright, and then uh, current year loss. And then you have approved donation. Okay, what about your approved donation? Okay, approved donation also, uh, you have to look at the date. Date of the donation. If the donation falls during the disease period, then claim under the disease period. But if after that, then you claim under the executed period. And under here, you also have what we call annuity. Yeah. So annuity will be under disease period or what? Annuity you pay to whom? You pay to either the wife or the children. And normally it's after the death. Huh? So when, because the annuity is paid after the death, after the date of death, then it will be assessed under the 
executor. Ya, yeah? so that one I letak dekat sini. Okay, assess under executor period. Kenapa letak executor itu? Okay dah. Apa lagi? Annuity, approved donation. Oh, oh, okay, okay, hold on, hold on. You claim approved donation first or you you put annuity first? Annuity. Annuity. Okay. So even though, all right, you may get the same, uh, you may get the same uh, chargeable income, but the format must be correct. So katalah you buat, you buat current year loss and then minus approved donation minus annuity is wrong. Because the, the law says that you claim annuity first. Then only you approve donation. Right? So why is it like that? Because of course the government wants to maximize their, their chargeable income. The government, yeah, they want to collect as much tax as possible. So they say that, okay, you can only minus annuity first, then whatever left only you can claim approved donation. Right? So, so that approved donation is restricted lah. And then you have your chargeable income. So uh, remember that there's a for the deceased person normally the question is not only under chargeable income they will also ask for the tax liability. All right, why? Because they want a uh, this one chargeable income. Ke? Okay, what do you call this? Ini panggil apa kat sini ni? Total income. Total income, yeah. Sebab apa? You are the relief. You are the relief dulu, yeah. And then uh, that really depends whether Okay, ni apa benda pula ni? So that really depends when, uh, for the deceased only if you are a resident. Alright, and executor will get if that domicile in Malaysia. Then, and how much is the relief? Normally the relief is 9,000 ringgit. Okay, again, for the deceased person, we get a relief of 9,000 if he is a resident. And for the executor, if the deceased died domicile in Malaysia. So once you have your chargeable income, then to complete your tax liability. What about the tax rate? Tax rate, that means that if you're a resident, then it's a flat rate. A uh, resident apa? Scale rate. Yeah, similarly for the... Okay, so mean uh, scale rate but flat rate kalau dia kalau no residence. To the, the uh, to the executor, scale rate kalau apa? What's the tax rate for the no uh, for the executor? Kalau die, domicile in Malaysia. Okay, so X. Come back. You understand this part? The tax liability, tak betul ni? Tax liability. Okay, do you get that? Okay, for the deceased person, from your total income, you have to compute the chargeable income. And for that, you're given the relief. So personal relief given is 9,000 if the deceased is a resident person and executor if the, the deceased person died domicile in Malaysia. Yeah. But of course, sometimes they also bagi relief wife lah. But again, all right, the question on estate is not to test you on the relief part. Right, dia tak test lah you punya ada anak empat ke, you have children and then you have the textbook lah, you purchase journals, no, we don't test you on that. It's just that to test you, the relief is available if you fulfill the condition. Yeah, so that's why normally relief that we allow, for example, normal question is that you only claim 9,000 for personal relief. Unless further information is provided, then you have to put in lah all the relief that is eligible for the deceased person only, all right? Executor is whatever the condition is that, the relief is satu je, the 9,000 personal relief.
provided that the deceased person died domiciled in Malaysia. Right, in terms of the scale rate, so once you dapat uh, chargeable income, then you compute the tax, well, how you compute the tax based on the tax rate. For the deceased person, if he is a resident person, then tax at the scale rate. If he is a non-resident, tax at the flat rate. Yeah, but if died domiciled in Malaysia to the executor, right, the scale rate, but if non-domiciled is in, uh, then you have to use the flat rate. Yeah, so then you compute your tax liability. So that, all right, covers topic for your estate. All right, of course, this is the, on the computation. But we all, I can also ask you on your understanding on the topic. All right, a uh, short essay, for example. Uh, I ta tanya lah the difference between domestic in Malaysia ke tak nak. Sebab I said, you dah tahu dah that question. Right, so I tu dah bocor. Right, so I will ask you something else. But, Normally, the question, the theoretical part is to show your understanding of the topic. Yeah? I may ask about the importance. I, I, I can't tell you, right? Because I have not prepared the question yet. Uh, what else? So, what what, what are the uh, things that you are not very sure about your estate? Uh, Dr. Allah, they asked about the apportionment of period. So let's say that this is first away somewhere in the middle of the month. How do so, you so, so, slow down, slow down. Okay, basically? Uh, my question is regarding the apportionment of the period. So okay. let's say the disease uh first away somewhere in the middle of the month. How mm -hmm. do you apportion the period? By right in practice they will apportion according to the number of days. Right? But for exam purpose I bukan nak test you number of days tu. Kan seorang kira 200 days, seorang kira 201 days, seorang kira 199 days kan. So because my attention is not to test you on the number of days. So normally, our exam question will just nicely mati on end of the month. You get it? Oh, okay. So you just get the the month lah, number of months rather than number of days. But if you go to in Inland Avenue Board, in practice, they will take the number of days. You get that? Yeah. All right. And that's uh, another question. Uh, uh, for the annuity pay from Malaysia Life ins Insurance, sorry, sorry. Uh, the annuity pay from Malaysia Life Insurance, is it exempted? Mm -hmm. Exempted, yes. For both beneficiary and executor. Sorry, the last part? For executor, is it still deductible? Any pay from no. Malaysia? Okay, yang exempted this is on the beneficiary. So if the wife receive annuity from the Malaysian insurance company, to the wife, the annuity is exempted. But to the deceased person, or in this case to the executor, all right, that annuity payment is still deductible. Disregard is exempted in the hands of the beneficiary. Okay, Tamil. Yeah. Yeah. Nampak tak the different? Because one is the computation on the executor. So the law says that in arriving to your uh, total income, you deduct annuity. Annuity payable. All right. So you deduct lah. Even though, all right, in the hand of the beneficiary, the, as the income is exempted. Okay? Executor. Okay, when they say that flat rate, all right, um, question normally now is 2020, right? So question will stay non normally 2019. Okay, logically, bila tax ni, katalah you sekarang, now is 2020, I won't be asking you to uh, to compute tax call for 2020 because, okay lah, now December already lah. But because you will have to submit your tax call 2020 next year. So your final exam or your midterm exam question most likely will be year assessment 2019. So you have to use the tax rate which is in 2019. 
lembek lembek pin okay uh, I think 24% for eh uh, no pang I don't think uh, flat rate is 24% it should be 28 ta Pang mana pang? Can you please check what is the flat rate? I think it's twenty eight percent. Ah, doctor. Yeah. Is it for ah uh, this is ah uh, outside Malaysia? What is that? Flat rate for okay. this is outside Malaysia. Ke? Eh, not for me. Flat rate tu for the deceased person. Kalau dia non resident, you still pakai flat rate. The deceased person, the executor, kalau dia ah uh, that. Kalau DC dah domisat, you still pakai flat rate. Non domisat. Nampak tak? So kalau flat rate ni berapa? Ha. Kalau? Dia tulis kat sini 24%. Why 24% lah? <laughs> so Dekat tak mana tak mana tak tak? Page 140. Hmm. Mana? I tak ada buku dah pula. Hmm. Mana lah? Kau dah ni lah? Page berapa? 120? Kenapa pula pula? 120. 140 doktor. Oh, sekejap eh. Oh, kenapa dia, dia pakai corporate rate lah? Kan, 24% ada corporate rate kan? Kalau uh, this is individual domicile, domiciliti dia pakai, okay. On page 140, Kenapa pakai rate macam ni? Si, uh, kalau dia punya do, died domisat, the graduated on page 139, 139 at the bottom, for the executor, the graduated scale of taxes as applicable to individuals is used. And then 9,000 is given as a relief irrespective of the resident status of the executor of course lah. Because the relief given is based on domiciliti. Deceased individual domicile in Malaysia. Kenapa dia pakai rate macam tu eh? Chargeable income 0 to 600k. Next 400k, next 1 million. And sitting 2 million. Haa, uh -uh, masa saya revision pun saya confused. Sebab you all tak pernah pakai, top, uh, tak pernah pakai benda ni pun. Haa. Uh -uh. Sebelum ni tak pernah ada benda ni. So, I tengok buku lama. Ya ke? Tentang, tentang ada saya tak puasan. Hmm. Okay, sebelum tu, your, your, your midterm exam, is it going to be open book or closed book? Up to you, that say. <laughs> I hmm. shall stay open. <laughs> open hehe. Hmm. I tak kisah sebenarnya open sebab UIA. Our text paper memang dah open book since last semester. Number one because it's a it's a online exam. So whether a student to kalau we say it's a closed book, right? I think some of them we also open book because yeah, lecturer tak nampak kan. Uh, so we decided it's an open book because uh, exam for example MIPPA because UIA is following the MIPPA. Uh, MIPPA is an open book. So our text paper memang open book. So the question, right, bila you open book, the question will be more difficult. Hmm. Question, the answer that you will not find directly from the text book. So you pilih nak mana? Transfer you are a job. <laughs> Alright, because uh, to do, to to prop, to prepare an open book question, alright, soalan tu tak boleh directly, okay, you boleh buka buku, dapat jawapan, no. You have to do that thinking, you have to rephrase. Uh, it's good, alright, because 
yeah, shows your understanding, right? But I punya CPA Australia pun is an open book, yeah? Tapi if you are not prepared, right, you wouldn't be able to find the answer from the book. Cik baik pas. Okay, so tak apa. For this is first, maknanya for topic executor, let's decide that because textbook tunjuk, you pakai this for this executor on page 140. So I will give you, but is it, it's going to be an open book eh? You nak open book ke? Okay lah, I buat open book. Ya? Yeah? Uh, sebab I bukan nak test you on your remembering punya skill. It's on the knowledge transfer. Ya? Yeah? So it's an open book. So bila open book, I don't have to give you the rate lah. Boleh? I don't have to give you rate. So make sure that you use this textbook ya. Yeah? As a, mana? Tak nampak eh? Oh, kenapa buku tak nampak? Okay. 2020 ya, yeah, the blue color. So that's the rate that you have to use. Because again, the question is not yet ready. Esok baru I nak buat soalan. So today, give me ideas on how I want to do the question. Okay, next. Now, uh, you're uh, 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 you uh, bukan uh, estate, uh, sini ni. Huh? Hello? Ha, ah, yes. Ah, uh, jap, nak, nak confirmkan balik yang Dato' cakap tadi tu. So sekarang ni, rate dia, kita guna yang buku ni lah yang in Malaysia, outside Malaysia ikut dia punya 24%, 25% tu eh? Yes, ikut tu. Oh, Ini itu executor tau. Hmm? Executor, yes. Untuk executor? Kalau yeah. yang, kalau untuk this is person ikut yang biasa Bukan punya lah kan? Ikut yang individu. Tapi tak ada lah buku dalam buku ni tak ada ah, bagi. So, saya, saya tak jumpa yang individu tak punya tu. Takpelah nanti saya bagi, saya bagi kat right. soalan appendix lah. Okay, thank you. Appendix bagi uh, tax rate. Okay, next. Kita pergi, okay dah habis estate eh. Ya Allah, 40 minit buat estate. Can we go to trust? Okay, trust lagi susah kot. Soalan trust akan susah daripada soalan estate. Ha, dah bagi soalan bocor eh. Padahal dia tak ada, tak sambung. Okay. Trust, ay, I dah bagi dah contoh trust ni dulu kan. So apa masalah trust? Kau suka hati je ada yang dia nak, dia tak nak. Trust. Okay soalan trust. You have to know number one, decide dulu whether trust is a discretionary, non-discretionary non trust or is a discretionary trust. Number one, okay. Number two, tengok. Of course, you have to see the beneficiary. Is it, uh, what's the portion? Right? B1 and B2. If you have two beneficiaries. Nah. What else you need to know? Of course, you have to compute the chargeable income of the trust. Chargeable income of the trust. From the chargeable income of the trust, kena tengok 612 apply ke tidak? Apa 612? A. Ha. Anyone? Hello? Set charge on trust. Hmm. Ya kan tak ada orang lah cakap soal orang tadi. Apa 612 A? Dapat tax credit. Oh, bagus. Okay. So, bagus juga. I tak pernah fikir you nak jual tax credit tu. Okay. Maknanya 612, kalau apply, kalau yes, maknanya tax is at the beneficiary level. So, you tak tax on the you tax tax on the trust, but you're going to tax on the beneficiary level. So, bila you are beneficiary level, tak adalah tax credit. Alright, because when you do tax comp, alright, remember that when you do for your beneficiary one and beneficiary two, alright, the income here, alright, the statutory income, alright, is what always be at gross. Yeah, it's always at gross. 
So bila you assess at gross but what you actually receive is net itu you akan bagi tax credit. Right? Katalah sini 100 sini 100. But actually all right the uh, the income that you actually receive is 76 each. Contohlah. Right uh, tak payah buat dua beneficiary satu je. Okay? Why? Because income is 100, chargeable income is 100, tax at 24%, so the balance is 76. But when you assess, you assess 100, of course here you akan bagi tax credit of 24. Nampak? Sebab apa? Because you actually tax at the trust level. So what you actually receive is already the net income. But assess at gross, that's why you are given the tax credit of 24. But kalau you tak ada, kalau you apply 61.2 maknanya uh, Trust will not pay any tax So whatever income given to you instead of 100 You what you actually receive 100 Sebab dia tak ada tax kat situ Right? So dia akan tax bila dia akan tax later at the beneficiary level So bila tax at beneficiary level There will be no more tax credit ha, Jangan tertukar Right? So that is the Implication of 61.2 61 to ni importance because why? Because in terms of the cash flow of the beneficiary So at the point of receive right, Beneficiary receive 100 instead of 76 So you are talking about not 100 ringgit It could be 100,000 Make a difference tak 100,000 dengan 76,000 A lot Yeah, the difference of 24,000 to Beneficiary can do a lot of things So that talk, talk about the cash flow At the point of receive of course, both has to pay tax, right? Um, trans buyer tax at 24%, right? Beneficiary buyer tax depending if the beneficiary is an individual resident, the scale rate. So then the difference between tax being had at 24% dengan the scale rate tu, dia akan dapat tax credit lah. Yeah? Unless beneficiary tax at the 28%, then they maybe have to pay additional tax. Yeah? Because the tax should be at 28%. Okay, so that is dah pergi ke bawah sangat dah Right, but bila you nak buat tax com Right, in terms of tax com of the trust Right, uh, format sama Right, where you have to use your You have to use the format 4A, 4C, 4D, all that Chargeable income, losses, then you minus you punya uh, Annuity, payable, right uh, What else? Uh, approved donation is the same but you compute anti chargeable income only. All right. And then, of course, the second part of the question will ask you about the statutory income of the beneficiary. So, statutory income of the beneficiary, then it goes back. Lah. Tengok balik. Is it discretionary or non discretionary? Why? It will make a difference in terms of the. Mana ni? In terms of your amount received income. Uh, apa nama dia? Oh, receive dengan statutory income kan? Kita panggil apa? Ah? What do you call that? Total income. Is it? Total income on the beneficiary and the amount received by the beneficiary. So kalau non-discretionary, we always goes back to total income. But discretionary, you akan ambil the lower of. Right? The lower of total income compared with the amount received. So that will be the discretionary trust. Okay. Is that clear? Okay. Then, all right, remember that sometimes you do have your accumulation. Right? So bila ada accumulation, it means that you have to put aside certain amount of money. Right? For the normally those below, below, below age lah. Right? The minor. So when you have accumulation, you always have to have to use the formula. What's the formula? Total income. Dia tak nak kawan I. What's the formula? Total income darabkan dengan uh, distributable income minus accumulation over distributable income. So that would be the formula when you have accumulation. Ha, dia baru nak tulis. Saya dah habis tulis, dia baru nak tulis. Tak apa dia tulis pun, tak tahu. Okay, so kalau I buat trust, remember that you have your 
you have to compute total income dulu ya. So, total income must use the formula that I've shown you before. Right, total income. So, then you have a distributable income minus accumulation over distributable income. Okay. Uh, sometimes you are required to compute the distributable income. Sometimes you don't. Right. Uh, I'm not sure this round I nak buat apa. So, I tak buat lagi kan. Uh, whether I nak tanya you on the compute this way income or given amount on the distributable income. Right. I may give you uh, a theoretical question, uh, your understanding on the distributable income. Right? What it is actually. Yeah. And then uh, in terms of the computation, I can always give you. Okay. So the question, all right, the one that we have discussed, the tutorial question, right, uh, the, 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 the challenging is that, is that in arriving to your uh, adjusted income kat sini. Yeah. So when uh, the question in the, uh, in the tutorial is in arriving to the adjusted income. So you have to decide whether the expenses that required by the trust whether the expense is allowable expense or not. Yeah, whether you start from gross income or you start from profit before tax, it's the same. You get the same adjusted income either way, right? So you have to decide first whether the expense is allowable or not allowable. Remember the question on your tutorial, talk about the wife lah, are the legal fees on the, apa, ada gado-gado, right? So all that is a non-allowable expense because why? Those expenses incurred not in arriving or not in the production of the trust income. Yeah, so it's not related. So because of that, those expenses are non-allowable expense. Similarly, like legal fees for that, that legal fees for that purpose, all right, so that is non-business income. Uh, we have expenses, for example, um, revision, right, or tax appeal. So tax appeal right, is not for that year of assessment. So that's why it's non-deductible. Any other expense that you are not sure? Hmm. All right, A time. Wait, A, B, 4, C ni bukan investment holding ah. Pang, you are advanced lah, Pang. <laughs> okay. Uh, that one is the, uh, I think that part refers to the total income, right? Total income of times by distributable income minus accumulation over distributable income. Okay. Any more on trust? All right. Trust normally soalan dia challenging. All right. So, I suggest that those yang dapat soalan tutorial tu, we have discussed all the answers, right? So, please redo that question, right? Uh, so that will help you for your midterm exam because the question normally like that. Okay. Any more on trust? Okay, we have 10 minutes for investment holding company. Okay. ISC number one, you have to decide whether the company is ISC or not. Most likely question akan tanya number one, is the company IAC or not? So you have to provide the justification. So how you decide whether the company is IAC or not? Eighty percent of the business before that. Oh. Investment as uh, activity. Yeah, the business main activity must be investment holding. Then only you check on the eighty percent. Yeah, and the 80%, you must know lah the, the formula for that 80%. Is that clear? All right. So, once you know that the company is ISC, then you have to apply, then you have to decide. You have to look at the question, is the company a Sendiri and Berhad or unlisted company or the company is a listed company? Kalau you nampak Sendiri and Berhad, memang clearly is a unlisted. All right. But bila you nampak Berhad, not necessary Berhad company is a listed company. All right. Only some of the Berhad is a listed company. You get that? 
But kalau clearly saying that, okay, the company is a listed in a bursa Malaysia, then you have to apply the rules applicable. What are the rules? Section berapa? 60F dengan 60FA, kan? If the company is unlisted in an investment holding company, then you pakai 60F. Kalau dia listed company, you pakai 60FA. Is that clear? Right. So, bila dia sendian, uh, sendian berhad or unlisted, right, then you have to apply number one is that you have to decide on the permitted expenses. How much is the permitted expenses? Okay. Uh, how to decide on the permitted expenses? Of course, only selected expenses is regarded as permitted expenses. So, given a list of expenses, then you have to decide which one is permitted expenses. So, once you get the permitted expenses, then you have to apply of these permitted expenses, how much is allowable to be deducted against your... Is it total income or charge of income? Total income. Yeah, total income. So, remember the formula uh, again, ah, ni baru kita pakai formula PAM. A times by B over 4C. So, you must know that A is the permitted expenses, B is income which is taxable, C is total income. Lepas tu dia ada satu lagi, tambah apa? What is C? Tambah exempted. Exempted, yes. You ada taxable income. Tambah exempted. Bukan dia tambah lagi satu benda ke? Gain oh, from realization. Realization of investment. Ha. So, dia ada tiga benda dekat C tu. Ya. Yeah? So, you get, you have to complete A times by B over 4C. Dan tu, once you get that, Alright, then you have to compare whatever you have, right, against 5%. Is it 5%? Of your B or C? A. B. Hey! Yeah, girl. You can have 5% of B. Betul tak? A times B over 4C, then you ambil 5% of gross income. Gross income tu apa? B, B. 5% of B. Yeah. So that is you punya by a fraction of permitted expenses. So you will have, then you have to compute balik lah. What is income, right? Section 4A, 4C, 4D. And remember your management. 4F pun masuk juga. Management fee. Right? Don't forget your 4F. So, then you have your aggregate income minus fraction of your permitted expenses. Okay? So, fraction of permitted expenses, it means that you have to look again your, tadi A times by B over 4C compare dengan 5% of B, whichever is lower. Right? I boleh tanya soalan you, right? Whether ISC is a good uh, structure, right, for a company. And you have to argue why yes or no. Kenapa it's not good to have ISC? Right? But some company will go for ISC rather than no ISC at all. Yeah? So that is a kind of theoretical question that I can ask. Because that question you cannot find in the textbook. That answer comes from your understanding of the topic. Isn't it? Okay. Alright. Then you have company, a listed company. Okay, listed company, you punya formula dah lain. Alright, because listed company, all income is regarded as section 4A income. Yeah, termasuk management fee. Is it? Management fee masuk mana? Berhad. Uh, adjusted income. Mana example dia? Management fee.
Tak ada lah pula. I rasa management fee akan masuk. Interest income. Mana management fee dia? Oh dia jadi 4A juga. Alright management fee pun jadi section 4A. Okay. So when it's a listed company, remember dia akan ada income dia. Okay whatever income will be assessed under section 4A. And bila you ada section 4A, each income has to be assessed separately. Alright. So each income, for example, you have your interest income. Or first you have your business income. So bila the business income, you boleh minus allowable expenses, right? Or normally you are given that inform, information. Right, whatever gross income minus allowable expense or direct expenses. So allowable expense for this, in this case, is direct expenses. And then you also have common expenses. And then you can minus your common capital allowances. Alright, so common capital expenses and common capital allowances is given. Right, but you have to look at what is the apportionment based on the income. Yeah, you have to apportion the common expenses and common capital allowance to each income. Yeah, so that is the test that you have to do. Normally, student akan salah all right, you get it wrong in your computation of the apportionment of your common expense and your capital allowance too. The apportionment too, macam mana you nak bagi? Right? If you look into the textbook, example 611, it shows you clearly the apportionment to dibuat macam mana. Yeah? Of course, master class, I have actually using the public ruling as a guidance, but you can also use the textbook, right, on ISC as a guide. But personally, I think that uh, for first timer, the it's public ruling is clearer, right? But if you have understand that clear, uh, you have clearly understand that from the public ruling, then you can also refer to the textbook because the example will help you to further understand the topic. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. So itu je lah. Tiga topik. Thirty percent. So, setiap tu, I kena bagi 30% tu banyak benda boleh tanya. Hmm. Okay. Wah, kita buat 10 minit je. Listed company. Okay, anything else? 80, okay. My tengok dekat sini. Ashraf, main activity 80%. Campur main, okay, gain. Okay, ni. Okay, tak ada apa. Okay, Shahin very good. 5% of B is for the part where you have to compare. So boleh dapat A tak ni? Tak tahu lah doktor. Tak tahu lah doktor. Tak tahu Boleh lah. Kan? InsyaAllah boleh, boleh. So, uh, uh, you all dapat midterm test yang lain. Have you done that? Or other midterm test? Tak ada, satu pun belum. Kenapa belum? Buat after mid sem break. Hmm. So I'll be the first paper ke? Second. Oh, okay. Okay, the first paper tu paper apa? Integrated case study. Pingsan. <laughs> so modular ke apa? Pap nak modular apa? It's going to be online, right? Uh-uh. So, masa you buat final exam last time, kan dibagi soalan question by question, kan? Mm -hmm. ha, itu namanya modular. Oh. Right? Kalau non-modular, dia bagi sekali macam I selalu buat, the whole question I bagi, so you have two hours to do everything. But kalau modular, one question, I bagi you 30 minutes. If you can do or cannot do, that 30 minutes is for question number one. So another question I bagi pula. Next. Okay, you submit all your question number one, done. Okay, now question number two. 30 minutes. Faham? Faham, Doktor. So you nak yang mana? Bagi je semua. <laughs> Masalah dia, ada isu bila online ni, bila bagi semua, student dia boleh share-share jawapan dia.
Hmm. Tak, tak apa, nanti saya tanya Madam Doktor apa eh? Hamimah. Whether it should be a formula or should be given at one off. Okay, dah lah open book. Eh, you kan, eh? kalau you, this is this the first time you open book? Sebelum ni, midterm mid test ada juga. Ada eh? Sebab sometimes, bila when it's an open book, students spend time to open the book rather than to answer the question. That is another challenge lah bila open book. You don't sibuk cari jawapan. Tapi tak tulis lagi jawapannya. Right? So time is always two hours. <gasps> two hours eh. 30%. Two hours. Boleh tak? Boleh doktor. Jangan susah-susah. <laughs> Because you only have two hours kan? Lepas tu ada kelas lain kan? Ah, uh, We don't have kelas lain lepas ni. You ada tak ada? No, 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 no. Eh, terus cancel. Tak pergi kelas. Ponteng eh? Doctor, is it on Wednesday? Four to six, right? Yes. Two hours lah kan? Yeah. We don't Cukup have lah. kelas. Okay lah, I bagi you two and half hour lah maximum. Two and a half hour until 6.30 Then you have 30 minutes to upload Upload in the Google Classroom also Okay ah. Shama, no no, three hours to final exam Ya yeah. Tak sempat nak share, yelah tu Ashraf I tahulah student kan terror Dia de depan ni laptop, handphone dia belah kiri, handphone lagi satu belah kanan So ini dia sembang kawan dia Sini sembang dengan grup lagi satu Haa, I tahu dah Hmm Okay Alright, so that's all for today Three topics only, don't worry, alright If you are well prepared, you should be able to answer the question Doktor Nah. Doktor can I ask, do you mind if kalau kita orang guna Excel untuk jawab soalan tu? Kita nak guna tangan juga. Hmm, betul lah kan. Excel ni lagi satu. I, I okay je guna Excel. Tapi tu lah boleh share-share pula kan. Okay, I copy. Oh, okay. Sidak, hantar kat my friend. Okay, my friend yang sama. Saya tarik balik. Itu je lah isunya. Memang lah I say you akan cakap you takkan buat kan. Itu masalah uh, online ni. Trust tu tak ada. Trust integrity my husband cakap. Tapi tak apa nanti saya fikirkan ya. Boleh ke tak nak bagi? Nanti saya tanya my, tanya anak saya. Anak saya buat accounting juga. Dia selalu komplain-komplain kat saya lah. Lecturer ni kini, lecturer tu macam tu. Alright. Any more question? Ada. If no, then that's all lah for today. Don't forget your attendance. Uh, what else? Huh? Okay. Tak apa, tak apa. Tulis tangan. <laughs> Alright. So that's all for today. Thank you for attention. Thank you for your participation. Alright. Um, I baru nak masak. You all tolong mak masak tak?